Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I wanted to bring you a little something from my trip to the Holy Land today. One of the places that really impressed me was Mount Nebo in Sin Current Day, Jordan. Uh, this is where God showed Moses the promised land. And this is a picture that I took standing from the supposed spot where God showed Moses the promised land. Now remember Moses and Aaron, they were not allowed to go to the promised land. Aaron died and was buried at Mount Hor near the Edomite border, border and that's in current day Petra. I also went there. Moses died and was buried in the valley near the town of Beth Peor and no one knows exactly where that is. Before Moses died, he placed his hands on Joshua and the Lord gave Joshua wisdom. This is found in Deuteronomy 34.9. Now, Mount Nebo impressed me because I got to thinking how it must have been for the children of Israel um, to be told that they were going to this land that God had promised them. They had never been there before. They didn't know what lay ahead, yet God told them to go there. Now, let's backtrack a little bit. Remember poor Moses? He didn't have an easy time leading that grumbling, complaining crew of thousands for 40 years through the wilderness. They left Egypt after 400 years of bondage and began complaining soon afterwards. We don't have food. God gave them manna. We don't have meat. God gave them quail. We don't have water. God gave them water. There was even an event in, uh, found in Numbers chapter 21 where the Israelites came upon some poisonous snakes that bit and killed some of them. And Moses prayed to God, and God told Moses to make a snake out of bronze, place it on top of a pole. Anyone who gets bitten can look at the snake, and they won't die. Now, there's a statue of this, what they call the Kedusa at Mount Nebo. This is a statue. It's a pole with a snake around it. Hmm, kind of looks like some of the symbols for the medical profession today, huh? Just the thought. Well, back to the children of Israel. On and on they complained, yet God met their needs. Now the land God was showing Moses, this land of Canaan, was going to be the promised land? All this got to me to thinking about what we're going through right now in this COVID-19 pandemic. I know I can complain. Why can't I go to the gym? Yeah, right. I know that I need a haircut. I bet some of you are complaining as well. Why can't my kids go to the park or the playground? Why have I lost my job? Why is my family member friend or friend sick? And on and on we complain. Now don't get me wrong. These are very, very valid complaints. But think of this. Just like God met the needs of the children of Israel again and again as they traveled through this wilderness, won't God meet our needs during this wilderness time? Aren't we staying home for our health and the health of others? Yes, this is a great hardship for some more than others. As we continue through this wilderness, let's try very hard to see what God has for us to learn. For some of us, complaining and going to the negative world comes very easy. It takes work to look for the positive in every situation. However, it can be done. Continue to write in your God sightings journal each day and document where you see God working. During this time, I'm learning patience and the importance of slowing down and looking for ways God wants me to minister in different ways than before. Those of you who know me know that I'm wired pretty tight and being productive is key for me. This wilderness time is teaching me to slow down, be more reflective, researching, studying, and learning through all of this. Now granted, I'm being still being productive, but in a different way, I think a better way, not just doing, but being. I pray that all of us will choose to look for what God is teaching us during this wilderness time. Each day is a new day to choose how we're going to journey through this time. I found this prayer, uh, prayer for a pandemic online that I wanna share with you. Listen to this. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May those who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making rent. 
May those who have the flexibility to care for our children when schools close remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel a trip remember those that have no safe place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of this economic market remember those who have no margin at all. May those who settle for quarantine at home remember those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us continue to choose love during this time when we cannot physically wrap our, our arms around each other. Let us find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbor. May we all choose to be God's hands and feet in the world around us. Remember what my scripture ring says, Gamzeavor, Bizeavor. All this shall pass, and this too shall pass. Have a great rest of your day.